All right. Let's go take a look at this new setup. I think you guys will like it. Well, guys, I think it's about time for another little gear talk or tackle talk or whatever you want to call it. Um, but like I said, I wanted to show you guys my newest setup and run through basically uh, why I set it up the way I did and what it all actually is um, and what kind of lures I'm going to be throwing with it. Um, so we will talk about that right after this sip of wine. Yeah. So, first thing I wanted to do was get into the swim bait world. Um, I'm talking about those multi jointed plastic, hard plastic swim baits. I'm sure that uh, a lot of you guys have heard about and or use. And I wanted to get into some of that stuff because I wanted to start um, targeting Northern Pike a little more. And I wanted to start targeting bigger bass too. You know, I know these are effective for bass, but really I wanted to kind of have a rod where I could go after northern because I love catching northern pike too. So, um, so first thing I did was I I had to ask myself, you know, how heavy of lures am I going to be throwing? What lures am I going to be throwing? And uh, I ca I came up with two things that I two ideas that I really wanted to go with and first uh first lure I wanted to go with was something like this and this is a Savage Gear it's called a Savage Gear Foreplay and they make these in a five and three quarter um I think a six and a quarter inch long and an eight inch long eight or eight and a quarter inch either way um but yeah this this was one of the types of lures that I wanted to start throwing. As you can see, it's got these joints in it, and they look incredible in the water, by the way. Um, these are by Savage Gear. Um, and the biggest thing that I had to pay attention to is the weight of something like this. And these lures weigh between, I believe, three quarters of the three quarters of an ounce and um, like an ounce and three quarters or two ounces depending on what size you get. These two right here are an ounce and a quarter. So I wanted to do set up a rod for that application and just a regular crankbait fishing rod that you would use, um, you know, for like a shad wrap or um, you know, a square bill is not quite heavy enough for something like this. Uh, another lure I wanted to use was a bucktail, classic spinner, you know, inline spinner bucktail, um, you know, like a MEP or something like that. And these, I believe, are about the same weight. Actually, these might only be about an ounce, somewhere between three quarters of an ounce and an ounce. Um, but I really like to throw these too, and they're very effective lures. Um, I got a couple shiny ones like this, and I also have a couple painted ones. Just kind of depends on lighting conditions, water conditions, what you're going to use. But uh, give you an idea of um, how heavy of lures I wanted to be throwing. And so, like I said, these are six and a quarter inch long and an ounce and an eighth to an ounce and a quarter. This is an ounce and a quarter. This is a sinking version. And this is an ounce and an eighth. And this is the floating version. And you can see it's set up like a crankbait too. It has this lip on it. And you know, these are crazy effective baits. Really, really effective baits. Um, you know, these swim baits go up to three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine ounces you know 14 inches long i'm not throwing anything like that but i wanted something that i could go after northern pike but also big bass would go after too so that was the idea behind the uh the whole setup and 
the first thing I ask myself is what types of lures am I going to be throwing? And then I could go from there. So the next thing I'll talk about is the actual rod and reel itself. And as you can see, um, if you guys have seen my concept, my 13 fishing concept day two video, um, this probably looks familiar. Well, it is totally different because this is a totally different reel and a totally different rod. Same type of rod, St. Croix Premier, but this is a heavy fast action rod. And this is a seven foot. Uh, I usually always go with seven foot just because it's a good length for what I do. And um, I just think seven foot's a comfortable length. Um, anything more than that, I'm not really gonna be throwing baits like this I'll probably be that'll be probably a musky setup or something um, but for like bass fishing in northern pike and walleyes even you know I'm gonna stick with seven foot that always is a good length for what I use but the uh, the heavy fast version of this is nice because it has um, reinforced guides and as you can see you know usually a casting rod will have a guide where it has like a reinforced tab like these you know but all the way down the rod all the way to the tip it has these reinforced guides and on the St. Croix Premier and actually from this rod all the way up to their musky rods they have these type, these types of guides, and I like these guides because um, they're a little bit oversized all the way down the rod, and compared to like a, a bass fishing rod, you know, like a crankbait rod or whatever, they're a little bit smaller. These are pretty big eyes, and I like that because I'm using this particular setup um, later in the year. I mean, late, like late fall into winter, um, quite often. So. You're going to have air temperatures that are, you know, going to be cold enough to where you get ice buildup um, on your rod, in your reel, and in your, you know, and in your eyes especially. So the oversized eyes don't build up as fast, and also when they do, they're easy to get the ice out. You know, whether you want to use a knife or your finger, a hook or something, if it gets too bad. Um, but really, I haven't had too big of issues yet. Actually, the last video... I believe it was like 15 or it was somewhere between 15 and 20 degrees out that morning when I was fishing and I was getting ice build up, but it was still working great. Um, you know, and with the heavy fast rod, you get a little bit longer handle, a little bit longer grip here in case you need it, which, you know, maybe. <laughs> um, so that's the rod. A heavy, fast, seven foot St. Croix Premier. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be a St. Croix Premier. That's just what I use. But uh, so somewhere in there is a good weight to use for these uh, this size um, lure. And, you know, medium heavy would probably get away with it too. But I think um, you know you might have a little bit, a uh, little bit of trouble. The other thing I want to talk about too with this rod is even though it's a heavy fast rod, the tip of it, you can see that, it still has a little bit of give to it. You know, it's not a broomstick, um, but it's, it's, it's definitely heavy enough to handle these really well, but it also has give. And that's really good to have because, you know, the lures we're using for this, they have treble hooks. You can see they have treble hooks, right? And treble hook lures are very important um, to have a little bit of delay in your rod tip. So crankbait rods usually are a medium, fast, somewhere in there. Um, I'm not going to use a medium heavy for crankbait fishing. And this is kind of the same idea, but because they are bigger treble hooks, you can go a little heavier, but you still want a little bit of give on the tip. So, um, otherwise you're just going to rip these lures out of the fish's mouth. Same thing as if you're using a regular crankbait, um, you know, you could have some issues. So, okay. Um, 
So that is really everything with the fishing rod that I think that you guys need to know. This particular rod is good for um, half ounce to ounce and a half lures. Um, always pay attention to that when you're buying a fishing rod or if you're going to strap on a lure. Make sure you check out how heavy of lures you have and what your rod's rated for. Um, because you can run into some big issues if you overweight it or you know you're just not going to get a good hook set or the action of the lure is not going to work right. Um, so you know pay attention to that 12 to 25 pound test line I'll get into that in a little bit um, but yeah we'll move on to the reel next and you guys probably saw my last video that I had it was my 13 fishing concept day 2 video well this is like the same exact reel as you can see it's it's looks identical right except this is the 13 fishing concept day 3 and this is specifically a swim bait reel, which is what these are. And it's also like a musky fishing reel. So this is a very strong reel, very beefed up. It's a little bit more oversized. The A2 is a 200 size reel. And this is the A3, which is a 300 size reel. So this is really um, comparable to like the Abu Garcia Revo Beast. Um, you know, things like that. That's what this is categorized in. Um, so it has more line capacity as well, um, which is, I guess, a good thing, you know, if you hook into something really big with this. Um, you know, really beefed up reel, like I said. 40-pound uh, drag on this thing. Uh, absolute monster. Yeah, you could probably rip a, you know, 38, 40-inch northern right out of the water with it if you don't break something else. A little bit oversized handles um, compared to the other one and it does come with a power handle uh, which I don't have around here but it's just a little bit longer and it's just one knob basically and a lot of guys like to use that as well this comes in a number uh, I think four different gear ratios all the way from 8.1 to 1 down to 5.3 to 1 this is a 6.3 to 1 and normally I'm a big fan of the faster gear ratios, but for these baits and even these um, inline spinners, I don't like to go crazy fast because you're kind of defeating the purpose of you know what these are designed for. They like a um, a medium to slow retrieve because it gives them a better side to side action in the water, and that's what you're going for. Um, so a real fast gear ratio is not necessary for the type of fishing that I'm um, doing with this rod, or the types of lures, I should say. Um, you know, underneath this shell here is the braking system. Um, I'm not going to go too in-depth. There's a bunch of videos about bait casters and how they work. Look them up if you want. Um, you know, a lot of guy, a lot of people use the... The braking system it'll go from zero to six and i'll run this up on a four to a six because these are heavier lures you know and i'm whipping them out pretty hard so it's nice to have a little bit of um a little bit of security there to prevent from backlashing obviously and then of course your knob here to adjust your tension on the spool as well to uh you know prevent from backlashing <laughs> so yeah it's been a great reel so far i've only used it a handful of times now i've only caught a few fish on this not too many yet because i bought it just uh, about a month ago so i haven't had a lot of time with it but from the few times that i have used it it is a great great reel haven't had a single ounce of problems with it so far um Trying to think what else is on here that I need to talk about. Yeah, that's about it. You know, these reels always come with a hook keeper here. I, I don't ever use them because, uh, you know, rods come with a uh, hook keeper nowadays on them. So not, not necessary. But they got it there if you want to use it. So, um, all right, so that's pretty much all I'm going to talk about with the reel. Um, talk about the line next and 
a lot of guys will tell you different things to you, different types of line to use. Everybody has a different type of line to use. And I would say if you're going to use these types of swim baits, stay away from braid. Um, mainly because, like I said, you got treble hooks. Braided line is, there's no forgiveness. So you might rip the hook out of its mouth again. Just like we talked about with the stiffness of the rod. If it's too stiff, you have that chance too. Braid kind of does the same thing. Um, not only that, but because I'm using this in colder temperatures, um, when it comes to ice buildup, braid is horrible. Braid just does not work right. Um, so what I'm going to say is, is use either monofilament or fluorocarbon. I use fluorocarbon on this. Um, if you're gonna use floor, if you're gonna use mono, that's fine. Just remember that bait's gonna want to stay up in the water column a little more versus stay down in the medium to the low water column. Um, I like to use fluorocarbon on here because it still has a good solid hook set and a lot of sensitivity, but yet it has a little bit of forgiveness. And also, fluorocarbon does really well in the cold weather when you're having, you know, icing issues. Um, so that's why I went with the fluorocarbon and just suffix fluorocarbon is what I always use. And this is 20 pound because I am using bigger baits, fishing for some bigger fish. So I'm using 20 pound fluorocarbon. Um, I'd say anywhere between, you know, 15 probably work fine at the very lowest, but I would say 17 to 25 pound fluorocarbon is perfect. And this rod is rated for 12 to 25 pound tests. So, um, obviously you can go over that, but now you're getting into the chance of breaking something on the rod. If you go past that, we do it all the time in fishing, but that's why they put that on the rod. So 20 pound fluorocarbon, great line, um, super durable. And the thing with fluorocarbon, why it does not show up in the water is because it doesn't reflect sunlight like mono does. If you're fishing super clear water um, in the summertime, fluorocarbon's got a little bit of an upper edge when it comes to that, but it doesn't float. It's not buoyant, so, you know, something to think about. So, we're going down, we're going down the line, get it? We're going down the line, and what we got tied on is a six inch steel leader and you know just make sure you got a high quality leader i can't remember the name of this i think this is a tooth shield leader and they are specifically for northern and musky fishing um, it's got a nice barrel swivel up here on the top really high quality barrel swivel and a nice snap I'll probably take it off the hook keeper here um but yeah a nice a nice snap and I like having at least a snap on because it gives your swim bait better action but these are big baits with big hooks and when it comes to traveling it's nice to be able to just snap them on and off real quick because I've had them hook into car seats I've had them hook into my coat sleeve if I got a coat in the back and there's always that time where you move your arm wrong and you're gonna bury a hook into your arm or maybe you got a dog in the back seat you know take the lure off put it in your tackle box and now you can just hook this snap onto your hook keeper you know these are bigger baits with bigger hooks and just better to be safe than sorry this is just a six inch leader steel leader nothing special i think six inch is sufficient enough for you know what we're doing here Anything over that, I don't really think is necessary. So maybe for, you know, 58, 60 inch muskies, but I'm not going after those intentionally, <laughs> you know. So that is about it though. Really pretty simple setup. Um, you know, uh, that's all it is. It's just a little bit heavier version than, uh, my other bass fishing setup that I use for crankbaits and stuff that you, you guys have seen me use in other videos. Um, 
yeah it's been a fantastic rig and i'm really excited to use it more next year and hook into some big fish and um just really you know feel how much power this thing can handle um one thing i'll talk about too or that i'll say about the lower gear ratio is you do have a little more torque you get a little more power with it and that's also nice with the bigger baits especially bigger spinner baits um i like having the lower gear ratio it's just just a little easier and then also with big fish you know it, it helps a lot too so if you guys found this video informative um please give it a thumbs up if you'd like to see more of this stuff let me know and if you haven't subscribed please do and if you have subscribed thank you very much and tell your friends share the video and you know if you got some fishing buddies that want to watch the videos or learn some things tell them to subscribe and check me out because uh, i'm going to be doing some more of these how-to videos or gear talk videos or whatever in the future i think it's uh it's a good thing to do you know i'm just telling you guys knowledge about what works for me you know i'm not the best at any any of this i don't ever claim to be but you know i do catch some fish and uh, i'm just telling you guys what works for me if you have any suggestions or comments or anything please let me know i like to learn too so until then we'll see you guys next time and have a wonderful day